Good morning, y'all. It is day 139, and I'm leaving Hanover, New Hampshire, and uh, doing a little over 16 miles today <clears throat> to the Trapper John Shelter. And uh, yeah, I had a nice zero yesterday. Got a lot of things done. Uploaded videos, uh, ate some, ate some real food in restaurants, and had a few adult beverages with my friend Rocket Man, and just relaxed. Really, it was it was good. I had been on trail uh, twelve days in a row, so that's always a good thing for me, mentally and physically. I uh, got my new shoes on today from my my wife sent me and uh got a resupply and that is the deal going uphill right off the bat here uh pretty day right now but it is supposed to rain uh this afternoon so we'll have to see how that plays out hopefully it doesn't start till we get to the shelter that'd be nice and then it's supposed to be pretty next few days afterwards so hopefully that'll hold as well and that is uh how the day is shaping up so let's get going Prior to the 1940s, there were about 7,000 peregrine falcons in North America. But by the 1970s, their population had drastically declined to only several hundred. In the eastern United States, not a single nest could be found in 1963. It was soon discovered that peregrines had disappeared entirely from the eastern third of North America. For years, scientists had no clue what had happened. Over time, Researchers figured out that the pesticide DDT was the cause. 
Some died, but most survived, and the DDT prevented the females from laying eggs or caused their eggshells to crack during incubation. In 1972, DDT was finally banned, but the falcon had been declared endangered in 73. And by the late 1970s, small success stories were reviving the population. And in 2020, the 40th year of recovery in New Hampshire was celebrated. There are about 24 territorial pairs in the state now, and one of the last remaining transmitter-monitored females makes her breeding season right here on Holt Sledge. And now you know the rest of the story. Hey y'all, so day 139 has come to an end and sun's starting to set over there. I'm here at uh, Trapper John Shelter. Uh, did about 16 and a half miles today. Um, but we are into New Hampshire and it is, uh, it's real. Um, there's a reason people say this is probably the hardest section of the AT of this state. Uh, went over um, South Moose Mountain down and then back up North Moose Mountain. Both pretty good climbs and then, then went down pretty low and then went back up over uh, Holtz Ledges where the uh, Falcon lives. Um, and uh, that, was, that was a really steep climb today. Uh, so I think again, total eva elevation I think for us was uh, a little over 4,000 feet. So, 16 and a half miles, 4,000 feet uh, is always a good start. Um, but uh, that was about it. You know, it's had a decent views. So uh, it it rained a little bit on us, but no torrential downpours. Most of the rain, I think, kind of split and went north and south of us. So, lucked out. And tomorrow's supposed to be pretty. So, lucked out again. Um, it's similar to the Smoky Mountains, though. There's a, there's only so many shelters, not a lot of places, just a stealth camp. So it's going to be kind of a race um, to the next shelter to see who can get in there. And there's not many tent spaces available. So that's no good, but we'll figure that out. And tomorrow, um, 
is a uh, shorter day. I think it's, uh, it's only around 14 miles, but still decent elevation. And um, that's about it. Yeah. Um, but we're in New Hampshire and uh, it's, um, it's, um, it's real. <laughs> That's the best way to put it. It, it. They're steep. They really are. And they're going to get worse or tougher. But uh, that's okay. So anyway, that's it. Uh, I'm going to turn in here. Probably stay in the shelter. Uh, it's pretty clean. Doesn't seem to be a lot of mice. And uh, we'll see y'all tomorrow. Bye, y'all.